All right, let's. So we're going to continue a little bit. We started this on Friday a little bit. Now I'm going to use, it, do it on here. So let's talk. We have, for the majority of you, all but one of you is in this class. We'll have a graduation here, in. Is it June fourth? Right in front of you. But you might have. A, you, you might get some money for graduation. Agree? And I realize, you know, a lot of times it's like, hey, this is sweet. It's good walking around money. But let, let's just, let's just, uh, let's say you get a certain amount of money, but you know you want to put a thousand, you want to invest it. Okay? But because you took my class, and I had some financial literacy I gave you, you decide you decide that each month, because you have a job, each month you're going to put 100 per month into this investment as well. Still following me on this? And we know that there's 12 months in the year. But this is, this is why you want to invest it. Would we say you would maybe want to become a homeowner by age 30? Seem like a legit thing? So you are going to invest for 12 years, assuming you're roughly 18 years old right now. Everyone following me in this uh, little story? Okay, so, so that's kind of your plan because you don't know where you will actually be 12 years from now. I mean, hopefully all doing well, and, and uh, you maybe swing back by and say hello from time to time. I don't know. I, uh, I was out with uh, a couple of math teachers the other night, and uh, I actually came across seven former students of mine at the, well, at the location we were at. <laughs> <laughs> it started with a three-letter word. It started with a B and ended with an R. Had an A in the middle of it, um, and it was just—it was funny because, you know, they—they they were, oh my gosh, Mr. Sharp, and you know, some of the other teachers were with me. I had these teachers as well. Um, I was with some Shap teachers, because I used to teach at Chaparral, and it was fun seeing them and just catching up, and and I, I thought that was—it was fun. But it was—it you know—it's it's always great coming across former students and be like, oh wow, this is neat, but. So, 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 so far, we're kind of thinking, graduation from high school, you might get some money, but let's say you say, you know what, I'm going to take a thousand out, I'm going to put it away, and then, because I have a job and I plan on probably working, whether I go to college or not, I plan on, I think I can put a hundred dollars a month away into this, and we're going to find, we're going to find a, a mutual fund that's going to pay us at seven percent interest. Okay, but again, we don't know necessarily. I mean, this is kind of a, a, a tentative goal, but this is going to be in a mutual fund that doesn't have to be a retirement account. Okay, this could be in a mutual fund that there's two different types. There's one that you can pay the front end taxes on, and then you don't have to pay taxes once you withdraw it, no matter how much money it makes. And then there's others that you don't pay the tax on the beginning, but you, you offset your income. It uh, becomes like a tax shelter annuity, and then you can uh, pay tax on it at the end. What's better? Um, I'll just say diversify yourself. If you truly get into investing, diversify yourself a lot more. Okay, so let's take this information and let's apply it to the calculator. Let's go down there, pull this up. There we go. So I'm going to quit out of this, clear that, and I'll just clear my buttons. Yes, clear those. All right, so. Uh, the APPS button on your calculator is for applications. Ooh, they were so nifty. And we're going to go into finance, and we're going to go into the TVM solver. Okay? So, we said we're going to do 12 months, right? Because there's 12 months. Oops. I'm not going to go I'm going to go times. 12 years, yes? And I realize we could have won 144, but it just takes you to the 144. We had an interest rate of, we said 7%. Uh, 
our previous value was $1,000. That was our initial put in. We're going to do a payment of uh, $100 per month. We will figure out our future value in a second. Uh, payments per year or cost per year is going to be 12. That'll uh, fill it as the same thing for both. And then we're going to go back up to future value. And we're going to do this. We're going to say alpha, enter. And it's going to be a negative value for right now. And that's OK. Don't, just, don't, don't worry about the signs. But right now, our future value is tw almost $25,000. Okay. Now, I will tell you $25,000 when you are investing into a home. You want to put 20% down. Right now, 600,000 is roughly the median household in or medium house price. So you're not truly at that value. But again, we don't know what's going to happen in 12 years. Now, so that's how much money you would have. But then you could sit there and say, all right, how much would I truly have? Well, let's take that 24, 780. Uh, 22, around the nearest penny, okay? And let's figure out how much I had, how much I actually invested. So I did the original 1,000, right? Plus the 144 payments at, uh, at $100 each payment. So you put in 15,400, so that basically means that So you put in, you, you made a profit of $9,380. So you made money on institutions making money off of you. And that's, that's a fairly good chunk of money. Now, of course, the longer you keep money in there, the longer it's going to take place. Now, let's just say you choose, let's say you choose to, uh, you get to age 30. You're like, I got other things. I, 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 I might want to tap into that so I supplement my income a little bit. Okay. Now, you can supplement that income a little bit saying, you know what, maybe you know, I, I want to buy a car. And a lot of the car companies are going to, uh, are going to go ahead and you, know, you could use this money to actually pay your monthly payments on cars. Now, you could take all that money out, and if you paid tax on it in the beginning, you don't have to pay anything. You just get that 24000 or roughly 25000 out, and you're free and clear of taxes. Or if you didn't pay tax on the money in the beginning, you wait till the end, then all of a sudden you pull it all out, that 25000 gets added to whatever your income tax is, your taxable income would be, and then you would have to pay tax on it. Okay, you follow my my story on it. So, it does, and, and th thank you for bringing that up. Right now, you know what today's taxes are. You don't know, or you just you know what in, your income tax would be right now. Like we, you, like we, we could find that. We don't know what taxes will be in the future. I would say they would probably be more. Just based on all of the things taking place in life. So it might be a smart idea to pay tax on it in the beginning, but let's just say we have this money, we're not going to worry about taxes now. Yeah? So if they, if they pay uh, income tax on the original, like, uh, let's say they make their money or whatever, they intend to pay their income tax and they invest that, uh -huh. would you have to pay another tax? If it goes into something called a, it's, it's, a, it's called a Roth IRA, and it's an IRA sense for individual retirement account. Um, but if you, there are other accounts that, like um, American funds, a lot of times you pay the front end money on the taxes. And so when you collect it at the end, you don't have to pay tax on it. You don't have to pay double tax, you, no matter how much you made. Yeah? So, like, I already, so I paid the income tax on my investments beforehand, but I don't put in a Roth IRA. Right. Then I would just pay double tax. No, no. I mean, there's different types of accounts. It depends what kind of account there is. Um, if you went into some that had zero parameters on it and you paid tax originally, you probably have to pay tax above on what you would have made. So with, on that one, you would have made, 
you would have had to pay income tax on 9300 or wait, I take it back. Yeah, that, that's how much you made. So you're paying tax on 9300 not on the entire 25000 because you already paid original tax on that money. They're not going to double and triple tax your money. Does that make sense? Is that what you're asking? Okay, cool. All right, so let's go back into the apps, and let's see if we can make this work. Now, remember I said maybe we might want to think about supplementing our income. Like we've saved. We're proud of ourselves for saving. We're going to buy ourselves a new car. And rather than depleting all of this and onto the new car, because right now this was making 7%, agreed? So let's say you go buy a new car and you have to pay a 2.5% financing interest rate. Well, 7% is more than 2.5%, right? So, yeah, you could pull all your money out and say, I'm going to pay cash on the barrel for this. Or you could realize, hey, I have 7% that I'm making on my money that's in this account right now. I could, I could utilize these guys' money to do it. So let me go back into finance, TVM solver. So we're going to, let's say we decide we are going to take that 24. So we're at age 30. We're tired of driving the same old car that we've been driving forever. So now we have this... Uh, value of $24,380. And let's say we're going to have a payment, and we're going to make this negative, of $500. Because we figure $500 a month is going to go ahead and um, give us quite a bit of money. And let's just say this. You can take a car loan out for 60 months. So that'd be 60, 60 equal payments for your car. Okay? Well, we want to take 500 out for our car. And I just want to see what our future value would be. So we have that 24,300, or oops, that's wrong. I have 780. I have, that should have been a seven right there. 780, 22. We don't want to chip ourselves. But, we're just curious. I wonder if we would have enough money in here. So let's see if this future value, alpha enter. Oh, look at that. You still have $667 sitting in that account. Okay. But we're not even going to do that. We can start figuring out the difference. Let's say we decide our car, let's go to our car that we're going to buy. As we're taking out $500, okay? And that's hopefully going to pay for our car. But let's say your true payment on your car is only $400. That gives you an extra $100 that you get to play with. Okay. Yes, it can go towards your insurance, or it could go towards putting gas in the car, or whatever. Or if it's electric, plugging it in and paying for your electric fee. So you think about that. Let's say our payment on our car is this much. If I multiply that times 60, that comes out to $24,000 is what that car would have cost, you know, theoretically. Now, $24,000 car, can you get a car for that? Sure. And the hard thing is, right now, it's like, no, I want this car. I have to have the Mercedes or the BMW. You don't have to have that. And my point is, is, you know, I understand the ego and the car. Okay. And I mean, I, I feel really good about where I'm at in life where I could say, I want to go buy this type of car and I feel good about buying it but I'm not going to necessarily go out and buy the car because I need that car for people to have the perception that I am a different person than I heart who I already am. Um, so a car is a bad investment, but a car is a necessity unless you live in a city that has a transit system that you could rely on. The hard thing about buying a car is you go and you pull into the grocery store or the mall 
Well, it's very possible someone's going to be a jerk and open the door into it. Whoa, 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 my car? In your car, I'm sorry. Uh uh, not going. Not happening. (laughs) Yeah. No. No, but unfortunately, unfortunately, somebody. Somebody won't have as much pride in your car as you yourself would. So nice thing is, I had a teacher that came up to me, and I have this Mazda minivan. It has sliding doors for the back doors. And, and this teacher came up to me and goes, you dented my car. I said, what? You, I parked my car next to your car, and you dented my car. I said, what side did you park on? On your passenger side. Well, it's like, well, it's me gets out of my driver's side, and I open the driver's side slider door for the back seat and get my bags out and close it. She goes, well, I have a dent close to the back of my car. So we go out and we look. And I said, you sure enough do. I said, okay. So if this passenger happened to open, it would have opened and it would have hit right here, but you have a dent right here. Right. Well, this door, let me see if it'll dent your car. And I open it, it's a sliding door. Oh, I guess you didn't dent my car. I mean, and this, this was a teacher here at the school. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm a bad guy, but I just, I, I just used, I just used a little bit of logic to go with it. All right, so. <laughs> no names. So I would like us to work on these three problems. And let's see if we can finish these. If you need to borrow a calculator, I got some in the cupboard, or you could work with each other. You can use me for any help on this. Now the top part, just basically don't worry about filling out N and PV and FV and all those other things that are in there. Yes. I have a microphone on and I'm recording, so is it good? Oh, gotcha. All right, let's walk through these, see how we did. Um, so solving a future value, you can invest $100 each pay period for the next 10 years. If you're paid every other week and your investment earns 6% compounded every pay period, how much will you have at the end of 10-year period? Okay. So let's bust out the calculator, see what we do. All right, so... If you are paid every other week, that's 26 weeks. Oops, I went the wrong line. 26 weeks times 10 years. So that's 260, obviously. Uh, you can invest, let's see, you get 6% interest. And our present value is zero because we started it with nothing. But we're going to do $100 each payment. We'll need to find the future value. We don't know what that is. And then our payments per year. If you are paid every other week, that means I have 26 payments. And then cost per year goes in the same thing. We want to find the future value of it. So it doesn't matter what it is. Just have your cursor in future value. Hit alpha, enter. And it looks like you'd have $35,570.59 plugged in. Okay. Now, some people might say, oh, well, that's not that much. Well, take a look. We did um, 260 payments at $100. That means you put in $26,000 to get $35,000 out. So you're making money off of other people's money, which is great. That's what you want to do. Okay? So kind of think of it that way. You know, you have interest that's getting there. That's what you want. Interest is a good friend of ours. Uh, solving for the payment. After some thought, you have decided that you need to have two hundred thousand available. You need to have two hundred thousand dollars available. Oops, one more zero. 
You need 200,000 available for a future children's education. Okay, so let's say you get married and you're, you're not, you decide to have kids right away, so you decide to put money away for your kid's education. You decide $200,000 is a good amount of money. You find something that says you can make weekly payments. So weekly payments, there's 52 of them, times, and you're talking about 20 years after you start this. So that's 1,040 payments that are going to take place. Okay? You have uh, you found this account that's going to say it's pretty much 8.5%. If you make weekly payments into the annuity for the next 20 years, how much is each payment? So you go down to the payment key. Oh, uh, payments per year was weekly, so that's 52. Enter, and the C slash wire comes in. So we want to see how much our payment would have to be. So we go to the payment line, and we're going to go alpha enter. And that means you have to put $387.10 every week into this savings account. And again, some people might say, well, you know, what's the big deal with it? Well, you think about 387.10 times 1,040, because that's how many payments you put in. So uh, let's quit out of this. Let's go 387.10 times what? Oops, what did I do? I did something wrong. Didn't have something in the right. It shouldn't have been that. Finance, what do we do? Solver. Oh, okay, cool. Let's see, did everything agree with me? 1040, 8.5, 200,000? Oh, I see what I did wrong. Previous value was zero. Future value, it's 2 million. Or 200,000, wasn't it? And we want to figure out the payment payment here. Alpha, enter. There we go. That's a lot better. So we have to do $73.20. So paying $73.20 every week for $1,040. So $73.20. Times the thousand forty. So you put had to put seventy six thousand one hundred twenty eight dollars of your own money in. Well, you think about that. If you say you wanted this to get to two hundred thousand, so you're making a hundred and twenty almost one hundred twenty four thousand dollars just in interest alone on your money. So it's not an impossible endeavor because the interest and the time are both on your side. So that's what you go for. And then solving for how long? If you, if you want an annuity worth a million dollars. All right, let's go back into our apps. So if we want to have a million dollars, a future value of one million, how long would it take to invest $10 each day? So $10 each day. <laughs> so each day, that's 365 days. If you want it, 1 million. Oh, actually, let's clear that out. So we're going to do 365. Let's make that zero right now. Make that 365. We're doing that. Future value, payment, we don't know. We're putting in a payment of $10. Previous value is zero. We found something that was at 10%. So we want to figure out how many payments it's going to take us to do it. So I'm going to go alpha, enter. Whoa. Plug something in wrong. 10% payment, $10. Future value, a million. 365. Million, I got a million. Enter three, enter three. Payments per year, three sixty-five. Oh, 
Ooh, it's not gonna let me do it. Did this value? Ah, oh. something's not showing up right. We have, we're trying to find that n value, and it's not gonna let us do it. Payments per year. Hmm. Huh. I have to think about how that one works, but. I think you all started to get the gist, and we're going to be working with these types of things uh, for the rest of the week. And Senior Ditch Day Friday? It's, it's not Thursday or Wednesday or Tuesday? Is there a seat? Well, I hope, I'm, I hope I make it somewhat entertaining for you. So. Gotcha. All right.